as an engineer installing, maintaining, troubleshooting, or servicing equipment, there is a career available for you. Okay? So refrigeration in the cold chain starts with production after harvest, and uh, this involves industrial refrigeration. So after production, the product goes into storage, and then it is transported to the different uh, distribution centers or cold storages or supermarkets, and then to our homes. Okay. So here uh, you can see the difference between refrigeration and uh, air conditioning. So refrigeration is more of food preservation and it involves low and medium temperatures. While uh, air conditioning is for comfort cooling and uh, this involves higher temperatures. So here you can see uh, for air conditioning, the common space temperature is about 24 degrees centigrade. A high temperature, uh, this is uh, 10 degrees. Usually, this is uh, for food uh, process or preparation areas. Each of temperature uh, at zero degrees, which is normally used for carcass uh, chilling. Then we have low temperature, minus 25, and go up to negative 18 for cold storage. And the extra low temperature that goes down to negative 35, usually these are used for quick freezing of products. So refrigeration basically is just the removal of heat, while uh, in air conditioning, it's not only heat that you remove, but also you control the humidity, remove the dust, and also this is more air distribution. Okay. All right. So in refrigeration, the common uh, system that we use for the cycle is what we call the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, be it a small unit or a big unit, even for industrial applications. And uh, as a review, you can see here uh, growing of uh, refrigeration system, single stage direct expansion refrigeration system, in which the pressure side, which is uh, after your expansion valve up to the suction of your compressor and your, you have your high pressure site which is after your compressor and before entering the expansion valve. So in the evaporator, heat is absorbed no, from the space to be cooled as refrigerant evaporates at low pressure. And then the gas or the vapor goes into the compressor in which it increases the pressure of the refrigerant, including the temperature, above ambient condition. So this high pressure gas, superheated gas, goes into the condenser in which uh, the heat is rejected to the surroundings, uh, which results to the condensation of the refrigerant at the same pressure. And the liquid refrigerant now enters the metering device, which reduces its pressure and temperature below the space condition. Okay? So this kind of uh, system uh, would include also additional components uh, for better control uh, for protection of uh, like the compressors and, and uh, also for maintaining the temperature line. So here we have uh, ball valves. Okay. Yeah, ball valves. Okay. Then we have a filter dryer. So this removes <laughs> any moisture 
in the system. Moisture in the paper so that we know if there is moisture in the system. And then a solenoid valve which uh, controls the flow of uh, refrigerant into the uh, evaporator unit. And uh, this is triggered by a room thermostat. You set here the room temperature. So once the temperature is reached, it will close the solenoid valve and uh, will not allow refrigerant to enter the expansion valve and into the uh, evaporator coil. And as an added protection uh, for the compressor, we have a suction filter. So this uh, removes you know, the dirt that may come in the compressor. And if there is any liquid present in the suction gas going back to your compressor, uh, we have what we call this suction tube. Then we have a high and low pressure switch, uh, which protects the compressor. A discharge muffler, which reduces the sound of the compressor. An oil separator, which removes the oil from the discharge gas and returns it back to the compressor. And the side class no, to monitor the oil is going back. We have also an oil filter and an oil level regulator and an oil pressure differential switch. And uh, lastly, we have the, the liquid receiver. So basically, this is uh, more for uh, compression uh, refrigeration systems. But, uh, there's also some other components that uh, can be added here especially if the system becomes big. So you'll have uh, many components aside from uh, the uh, single system like this. Okay. So now I will, uh, I will show you, you know, my journey in refrigeration and how I started. So a long time ago, uh, there's what we call this food permanent refrigerated uh, warehouse, which has a 16.9 megawatt refrigeration capacity, central ammonia refrigeration plant. As you can see here, here on the map, uh, this is now part of what we call Arta South. So it is uh, being developed at the moment, uh, like uh, the body fashion. No? Uh, Center no, in 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 Taki. So before this, we have uh, strong facility, uh, as you can see here uh, in green. Uh, this is this was no, the largest cold storage facility in Asia at the time. So this was uh, in the early seventies. And uh, this facility is uh, receiving and staging area, uh, meat preparation rooms, seafood preparation area, carcass chiller room. It has also a banana ripening room no, with 16 chambers, eight folding freezer rooms, six blast freezer rooms, one plate tight fish freezer room, 75 metric ton ice. Uh, tube ice uh, tank and tube ice storage. Okay. And before, uh, there used to be six uh, what we call a wholesale uh, building, as you can see here on the picture. And uh, it is connected to the uh, main uh, building uh, by the way, this building is still in existence, except for these uh, six buildings over here. So they have a covered uh, walkway uh, from uh, building six going to this uh, main building. And the refrigeration equipment uh, from this uh, central refrigeration plant over here supplies the refrigeration requirements 
of the administration building's air conditioning system. So what does that mean? Uh, ammonia is being piped from this point up to this building to the uh, different glycol chillers installed or glycol air handlers installed in the different floors of this building. So this is about uh, 300 uh, meters the one way going from this uh, side over to this building. So even in the 70s, ammonia is already used in air conditioning. Okay. So this facility has a storage capacity of 55,000 cubic meters, occupying an area of 27,218 square meters. Okay. So last year, I was contacted by Good Terminal to help them uh, review uh, the design and uh, provide an alternative, uh, alternative designs in uh, what they are proposing to put up this uh, new cold storage facility. Uh, this is a uh, part of uh, the joint uh, cooperation between the uh, Department of uh, Agriculture and the Food Terminal to bring back you know, uh, what uh, FTI was mandated to do uh, decades ago uh, to help stabilize prices and uh, also to help farmers you know, uh, in uh, giving them more opportunity by uh, buying all their products, storing in these facilities, and distributing also to uh, the people you know, at lower prices. I will uh, discuss uh, this project uh, later on in the uh, last part of uh, this uh, webinar. Okay, so this is how the facility looks like. It's uh, 239 meters long and uh, 124 meters wide. And uh, this is how the machine room looks like. You have uh, 13 uh, screw compressors, and uh, you have here pressure vessels uh, that contain in, uh, ammonia at different temperature levels. We have minus 10 here, another minus 10, and this one is minus uh, 42 or 43, and this one is minus 31. You have liquid uh, receivers here, and uh, open type vertical uh, compensers and also cooling power. So this is a very huge system. And this machine room at that time uh, was uh, air conditioned. And uh, all the required safety uh, devices are included in this system. Okay. So here, uh, the shaded two part of this facility is what we call the uh, refrigerated duct. This is the duct, and uh, these lines are the refrigerated aisles. And uh, these are maintained at 7 to 10 degrees centigrade. And uh, the humidity requirement for this is about uh, 60 to 70% per inch. And then the other ones are the preparation groups, maintain also of the same temperature range. We have fruit or vegetable holding chills. Depending on the type of fruit that uh, you are going to put inside the rooms, you adjust the room temperatures. Then we have here also a meat carcass chiller, a holding freezer rooms. And uh, later on, after uh, more than a decade of operation, uh, there's a big requirement for frozen storage. So they converted these additional four rooms you know, to these rooms. And then they have uh, seven uh, last uh, pizza rooms. So six here and one 
in the C code uh, process in the RTM. All right. And this is just a simple and schematic diagram of how the system looks like. Uh, so I, I'm not able to draw here the, uh, uh, the cooling power, but uh, now we don't use cooling power and condensers anymore. Uh, but we use what we call an evaporative condenser, which is basically a combination of, an, of a shell and tube a condenser and cooling power. So this is uh, more efficient. Then we have our liquid receiver, our high stage compressor, our intercooler vessel, and uh, our recirculator, in which uh, liquid ammonia uh, is stored in here and pumped to the different evaporator units. Okay. And uh, also, we have another vessel that contains uh, liquid ammonia at a minus 40, which is also pumped to the different evaporator units uh, in which uh, uh, these are used for glass phasing uh, the different products. Okay. So after a four years in, when uh, food turned on, uh, I was hired by San Miguel. So this uh, project uh, is a trip process and busy plan. So I was hired as a project engineer. And uh, this is located at the outskirts of Bacolod. Uh, on the left here, you can see the brewery, San Miguel brewery. And uh, on this right side here, is the location of the process plant. So again, uh, this plant is non-existent anymore. It's closed down in 1995. So only the brewery is uh, in existence at this time. So this plant looks like this. So it has a process area. And inside the process area, we have what we call plate freezers and uh, we have here chiller rooms uh, this is uh, for the wash room, room an ice room and uh, another chiller room we chose the product before being loaded in this uh, plate freezers and then we have here a water chiller and a uh, plate ice maker this is uh, the freezer storage, and this is the machine room. So this is a planned view of uh, the facility. And here I'll show you how the products come in inside this facility. So this is the receiving area. And in the receiving area, we have <coughs> a wash tub here. I'm using chilled water, so you can see it here in the picture. So after washing, uh, the products are weighed, uh, sorted, and they are stuck in this raw material group. And then and the products uh, go into this uh, machine, no? uh, another wash tank, and into the beheading uh, conveyor. <coughs> so a lot of people are uh, lined up here, so they remove the head of the shrimps and uh, some of the shrimps uh, which uh, the heads are not removed go into another uh, washing tank and uh, go to what we call a grating machine. A grating machine is basically a sizing machine. Okay. So after the shrimps are sized, they go into filling tables uh, the requirement is that they will be filled or they go straight to the weighing tables and then to the panning tables here. So panning meaning they are put in the metal containers in 
which uh, they will be packed in ice. And uh, after packing in ice, they will be stored <laughs> in this chiller room before being loaded in the plate freezers. Okay. So in the plate freezers, uh, they will uh, be here in about uh, three hours before being so once the pack are loaded, so they look like uh, uh, big ice packs. So they are uh, removed from the pan, and then they are packed in cartons. So after packing in cartons, they are now loaded inside this freezer storage. And uh, after they have accumulated uh, uh, some number of tons of products so after about uh, two weeks of production the container will come in to collect the products uh, that are stored inside this freezer room okay so this is the process flow so it's very important uh, to understand the process flow uh, this is because uh, you can see here the different uh, requirements like for example, in harvesting, so the a kilo of shrimp that you harvest, you need one kilo of ice. So going into the production plant, washing would require 1.5 liters per one kilo of shrimp. Sorting, you need also one kilo of ice per kilo of shrimp. You also have to maintain uh, the storage uh, temperatures. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, this sums up to uh, the chilled water and the ice requirement, including the storage and freezing requirement of the plant. So on the per kilo basis, we add all this up and multiply by the total uh, capacity of the plant. So that is how uh, we usually size up. Uh, the refrigeration based on the different uh, parts uh, uh, processes involved in this kind of uh, production. Okay. And uh, this is how the contractor uh, designed the system. Okay. So they use uh, an evaporative condenser, again, a liquid receiver that distributes uh, the refrigerant to the different uh, evaporator units uh, for the chiller rooms, uh, ice machine, and water chiller, and the evaporators for the cold storage and for the heat pieces. And uh, in this uh, facility, the compressor used is what we call an economized compressor, in which they have two suction ports. Okay. Again, uh, this design uh, they employ only a single, uh, a single uh, suction, uh, which is not really uh, that efficient. Uh, they should have grouped this according to temperature level, but uh, the cost of this would be less expensive. The initial cost, but however the operating cost will be more expensive. Okay. So I did a review of this after a few years uh, to check uh, what will be the difference you know, if ever uh, this uh, kind of design will be improved. Right? So after my stint with the shrimp process facility, I was transferred to the uh, all of the three in Venezuela, in which the project is to modernize the production plant. So in this facility, uh, this is about 19 megawatt of refrigeration capacity. So they have a rifle system, compressed air system, and the CO2 recovery plant, plus an ammonia pump out this system is uh, a very huge plant. So originally, uh, the equipment here 
uh, was transferred to another building on the back and after transferring uh, the equipment that can still be used, they demolished the building, put up a new building, and uh, installed new equipment. So after installing the new equipment, uh, the equipment that were transferred in this area was again put back into the new building. So this project took about uh, one and a half years to, to complete. So after that, uh, I was uh, recruited by our contractor, and uh, the contractor offered me a sales job, which I don't have any experience of, and uh, he offered me to sell uh, package equipment for the smaller cold storages. So I don't have any background in sales, but I said, okay, let me try and see what uh, I can do. So he asked me to uh, review uh, the catalogs and uh, we went to uh, Italy you know, to have some training. So this is uh, the type of equipment that uh, he wanted me to sell. Okay. And before selling any of those, he did to do a load calculation. And uh, the uh, manufacturer in this program uh, to do the load calculation and also the equipment selection. So whenever we uh, go to see customers, uh, we will get all the necessary information so that uh, we will be able to size up the load requirement and select the equipment, right? And uh, this is uh, one guy you know, that uh, inspired me also. Uh, he was a sales manager of Gram Singapore uh, a long time ago, and uh, he visited our, our office, and he conducted a short training for us. And the training is about uh, doing a load calculation using only a spreadsheet. So this guy influenced, uh, has a big influence on me, and uh, I started also to model. So this was uh, the first spreadsheet I did, a load calculation spreadsheet uh, in uh, Lotus Quantity. I don't know if you remember this uh, application similar to Excel, but uh, later on I developed it into something like this in Excel. So uh, in this uh, Excel software, uh, I can input all the parameters that I need in select in calculating the load and also in selecting the equipment that I uh, need. Right? So after uh, the business took off, okay, I was given another task to sell supermarket equipment. So another tip to Italy just to study again all this equipment. And uh, after two days, we were able to get uh, a few projects for supermarket. This is a very difficult one because we have a lot of competitors in the market. And uh, in 1999, Carrier uh, opened up an office in the Philippines and uh, they started also to get people. So during this time, it was uh, the country manager and ODB. Uh, to do all the sales work, the legwork for designing and everything, selection of equipment. And uh, we are selling also the same product, similar product, but at different brands coming in from the companies that the carrier at that time bought. So there were 17 companies that the carrier bought. So we have a lot of uh, product upgrades. So this consists of uh, air cooled condensing units, compressor racks for the supermarket, operator units, integrated cabinets also, we're selling four different brands, and compressors. Now these are carrier compressors, uh, what we call carline compressors, and uh, also uh, compressors from different uh, manufacturers you know, for large applications. 
and uh, these are the valves that are used, which is uh, a bit different from what are being used in commercial refrigeration. So for my first uh, design project, uh, big design project was this uh, juice concentrate cold storage facility, but using a centralized R20 refrigeration plant. So this started only with an entry of a bare compressor and timingly, uh, this could be a requirement to put up a cold storage. So uh, during the meetings, we were requested also to provide some proposals. And uh, here you can see you know, the facility uh, that uh, we were able to uh, construct. So this is uh, our machine room that, that we did. So in the machine room, we have our condensers and the compressors. Okay. So there are basically three compressors here. Two compressors to be used for the four rooms. And one compressor is paired. And uh, this is the phase one of the project. So since uh, the cold storage room are on this side, so we have a pipe bridge to connect the piping from the machine to the evaporators in the rooms. So phase one of the project. This is uh, the aisles, refrigerated aisles. And this is how it looks like inside the cold storage room. So this is maintained at negative 25 temperature. So after about two years, uh, the construction of phase two uh, is done. So this is another four rooms. And uh, this is how the facility looks like you know, at this time. So, so they have a plan to add uh, additional two rooms here. And since uh, R22 uh, is uh, already planned you know, for production, uh, they are thinking of converting the system into ammonia, right? And in converting the system to an ammonia system, we can still use the three compressors here, but uh, we just need to change uh, the whole coolers, uh, change the system from single stage to economize, change the vessels, change the evaporators. Aside from that, uh, there's no more, nothing more else to change, no? but uh, the same compressor can still have the capacity for the additional tools here. So in our negotiation with the customer, we started out uh, proposing on the, the products that we have. Okay, this consists of package units, uh, compressors, and uh, small evaporators and uh, during the discussion uh, they said okay why not use a different kind of compressor so we made option two a series of questioning uh, we came out with uh, another option in which we use uh, different compressors uh, what we call a parallel system then another one instead of using the electric defrost uh, here they wanted uh, warm gas defrost and then we came to option five so they have existing compressors they said what if we use our existing compressors and then another option was made in which why not use uh, big compressors so this negotiation took about four or four to six months you know, before the customer finally decided which option to take and uh, in this picture, you can see how the system came out to be. So we have the condenser here, a receiver, and then two single compressors and evaporators for the cold storages and evaporators for the refrigerated ice and the suction. So selling is not an uh, easy task, uh, but uh, 
dealing with the customer, you get more inputs, and uh, you can uh, at least uh, uh, provide uh, exactly what the customer would require based on the um, information that uh, they will be sharing to you. So after that, uh, we got another project. This is a fresh pineapple uh, rapid cooler facility. Uh, this is the, the existing facility that they have. They want to expand to another four rooms. This is the equipment uh, that are installed. Okay. And uh, we shown the four rooms. Uh, we did the central system uh, using an evaporative condenser. So this simplifies the installation. And uh, the plan was uh, to centralize everything to one system, uh, but uh, last year uh, they just changed. Uh, they just changed the equipment and changed also the refrigerant to be used into those uh, uh, environmentally friendly refrigerants. So the rooms no, are like this. Okay? So we have uh, evaporators there evaporator coils placed on this partition. Uh, this middle part is open. And then uh, we installed the uh, four uh, evaporator fans. Uh, in the original design, it was 10 horsepower, but uh, on checking, it changed to 3 horsepower. Okay. And uh, fresh pineapples, so I'm putting cartons uh, and arranged on top of the pallet. So one carton, as you can see here, Consist of 10 pinos, and uh, there are 54 cartons in one pallet, and there are 24 pallets in one room. And uh, it is required no, to pull down the temperature from 28 degrees centigrade to 8 degrees in four hours. So, this is how it looks like fan view facility. Okay. And uh, this, this is the actual room that uh, was constructed and this is how the products uh, were put inside that group. So basically the system will be like this. So it's a piston compressor, suction accumulator, evaporator coil, condenser, Another challenge now that uh, we had was to design an ITF panel. So all of this, uh, it was also my first time to do. Uh, but uh, fortunately, we were successful to operate this. Uh, and uh, the, the, the customer now were happy with using this for a very long time. So probably it's about uh, 18 years of it. So the concept here was to freeze 2,500 kilos per hour of pineapple chunks at the temperature of uh, minus 40 suction. The design no? involves uh, sizing up uh, the whole unit. So we supplied them the insulated panels, the evaporators, okay, the fans, uh, the compressor units for this one. Instead of uh, buying a complete set no, from uh, manufacturers, uh, they were able to save about 40% uh, of the total project cost. So this is uh, the arrangement of uh, the compressors. We have a high stage and a booster compressor. Uh, this is the receiver, the evaporative condenser. This is how the freezer looks like when it was uh, already finished. Okay. And uh, in the design, we had a lot of discussion about the size of the equipment. But actually, they were thinking of uh, having different capacities and freezer should be designed as a modular system which they can add 
or subtract uh, one of two modules. And uh, this is how the refrigeration system looks like on the schematic diagram. So we have a high stage component here, the intercooler, and the low stage compressor here. And this is the uh, low pressure vessel that supplies uh, liquid ammonia to the spiral reservoir. And a few years ago, they, since uh, they've been adding systems, so the ammonia plant became bigger and bigger. Before it was only two compressors. Now it's about uh, uh, 11 compressors. And uh, they need a pump up system for maintenance purposes. Okay? So we designed a pump out system for them. As you can see here the picture. So basically, it consists only of a pressure vessel uh, size the same as the biggest uh, existing pressure vessel that they have and a small compressor over here. So this is an isometric view of uh, that uh, vessel. And uh, you can see two lines. Uh, one line is connected to the top of the uh, vessel and the other line is connected to the lower part of the vessel. So the idea here is uh, to transfer the refrigerant from this vessel to this vessel by uh, pressure difference. And from this vessel back to this vessel after any replacement of this part of the system. Okay. So there was also a project uh, that we did, banana cold storage facility, uh, which uses ammonia and glycol. So this is uh, in Tabao area. So the plant is located beside the sea. So every three days, there's a vessel that picks up the banana from this facility. So it has big uh, compressor units. Uh, five, uh, four, four compressors. Uh, this is uh, the loading area, storage rooms. You see here the glycol package. And, and since it's near the sea, uh, instead of having a cooling tower, they use condenser, uh, seawater no, for the condenser to be. And this is the shield loading area. So uh, the system basically look, look like this. They have a compressor, and uh, this is uh, the glycol chiller. So the ammonia in this vessel pulls the glycol that is being uh, circulated uh, from this tank to the different uh, fan coil units and back to the uh, heat exchanger. So another project that we did is storage uh, picture of it. So much simpler installation. So when I was uh, assigned in Thailand, I uh, was able to get this uh, project for a polyethylene plant, um, which uh, did require a uh, jet gas children but using R507 or So this is the killer package, okay? and this is the compressor package. So this is how the system looks like. This is your compressor, the killer, your intercooler, and this is your uh, condenser. And we also did a supermarket uh, project uh, using a cascade system uh, R404A and CO2. Uh, but using this kind of system in a supermarket uh, is very expensive, especially the temperature required only up to negative 35. So for this kind of system to be more efficient and more economical, you know, negative 14. 
So this is a schematic diagram of how this uh, system uh, looks like. So this is uh, your medium temperature or primary system, and uh, this is uh, your low temperature cascade system. So before going back to Philippines, I was assigned to design compressor wrap for the supermarket. So in designing, it involves different uh, phases no? from conceptualization, specification, design, then check on how ready we are, and then we launch the product. So we start with the initial schematic diagram. So this is for a low temperature system, minus 35. This is another system for negative 10 degrees centigrade for medium temperature applications. And this is uh, the conceptual drawing of uh, the compressor wrap. And on the right, you can see the actual equipment prior to launching. When I started doing uh, consultancy, uh, this is one of our first projects. Uh, this is uh, located in Tayu, okay, Consolacion. So this is an 8,160 pallet position occupying an area of 2,914 square meters. Uh, the black here, as you can see, are solar panels. And uh, this is the machine room. So it was located on top because they don't have any to place the machine room. So this is the phase one of the project. Okay. So this is uh, the loading area. Okay. This is the machine room on top. So the compressors are housed uh, in this uh, building, second floor building. And this is the phase two of the project. And this is how it looks like inside. So for storing the uh, pallets, uh, they use what we call a mobile wrapping system so that they can store more pallets inside the room instead of the conventional, um, what we call selective type of uh, pallet storage. So in the second floor, the machine room, uh, there's uh, five compressors. Uh, these two are what we call the high stage compressor. The third one is the swing compressor. And lastly, these are the booster compressor that operates at the lower temperatures. So this is the first uh, ASRS facility uh, built in the Philippines. Uh, this is in Taguig, and this house is uh, 20,160 pallet position, occupying space of only 2,790 square miles. So in Europe, uh, also in Asia, this kind of facility is very popular. And uh, two years ago, this was uh, the first installation done here in the Philippines. The second one was in the uh, in Kaloocan, so 15,000 pallet position. So ASRS means Automated Storage and Retrieval System. So there are no people going inside this cold storage facility, but uh, there's a crate uh, that is uh, automatically uh, storing and retrieving the pallets from this uh, System. All right. So as you can see here, uh, the panels are installed horizontally. Okay. And this is how it looks like now when you are inside uh, looking downward. So this is where your crane uh, moves. And on the ceiling, uh, you have your insulated panels all supported by the metal structure. 
So, may out that facility looks like you have your loading. Actually, this is the loading area, and this is the dispatch area, and uh, this is the storage area in which you have uh, all these conveyors you know, that move the products in and out. And uh, your crane moves in this aisle. So there are four aisles where the crane uh, moves inside this storage. So this is just the uh, loading area. Okay, the containers are uh, outside here. And then they open the door. And then uh, they remove the products from the container and put here on the conveyors. Uh, this side is uh, the dispatch. So uh, from storage, it goes out here. And then they load in the containers. Uh, this is the machine room located on the third level. So they have uh, six compressors here and uh, two large uh, liquid recirculators, ammonia vessels. And this is the evaporative condensers that are overused and the liquid receivers. Uh, this is a new facility. Uh, it's uh, in Tayud also. This is the biggest now in the Philippines. It's a 24,000 talent position. Okay. And uh, this was uh, started during the pandemic. So this is uh, the preparation of the flooring. Uh, behind this, uh, you can see here uh, 12,000 pallet position storage and an 8,000 pallet position storage. So uh, this is how it looks like during construction. These are the evaporating plates uh, that are used for cooling the products inside this uh, facility. And uh, this is how uh, we mounted the evaporators. Actually, the uh, air is being blown down and not blown horizontally. Okay. So this is how it looks like when all the evaporators are mounted. And uh, this is now already with uh, insulated panels. Okay. So during construction, so same thing, we have uh, the panels installed horizontally the back portion, we have the machine room, and we have our condensers, and the receiver over here, and this is the staircase going to what we call the service panel. So in the machine room, we have three compressors, so unlike in the other facility, we have six. So this has been sized uh, properly uh, to uh, meet the uh, required uh, storage and uh, refrigeration requirements. So in designing cold storages, uh, we need to have the information, like the assumptions and the required data. Like for example, uh, what will be the ambient condition of uh, where the facility will be installed, what are the room temperature requirements, including the relative humidities, okay? And we need to understand the product temperature cool down. Like, for example, uh, the blast freezers that are required heat for dressed chicken, and the initial temperature will be 10 degrees, and to be frozen now to negative 18 in just four hours. Therefore, pack frozen meat in minus 10 to minus 18 in 24 hours. And for fruits, it's plus 10 to plus 2 in 24 hours. So products coming in this facility is about 846 metric tons at uh, one metric ton per pallet. So basically that uh, is equivalent to 34, 40 foot refrigerated containers. And uh, the total volume, 65% will be frozen and 
35% will be cheap. And the plus freezers will have a capacity of 24 megawatts at uh, 2,100 kilograms per room, uh, having a four hour freezing cycle. So all of this uh, need to be established before the design uh, can be done. Also, the pallet size, the height of the pallet, of the product, okay, the power requirement, working hours, type of lighting, the type of refrigeration system. Uh, need to include also the safety equipment required, additional systems. Uh, you're using deep well, you need a water softener, a storage tank, the type of insulating materials that will be used for the different rooms. Uh, what kind of underfloor heating for the uh, storage floor and the type of uh, racking system. Okay, so this is the, the one I mentioned earlier about the terminal. This was the recent time and I was asked to review this and to propose alternative designs in which I came up uh, with this one. This is it's one of the designs. It's uh, uh, it came out to be 12,900 uh, uh, pallet positions uh, using selective racking. The other design is actually a mobile racking in which the total uh, capacity is about 17,000 plus pallet positions. Uh, but for, for this uh, presentation, I'll just show you uh, the uh, details of uh, this uh, alternative. So the loading area, uh, this is uh, what I have with the 14 loading docks and uh, another room here to accommodate the smaller trucks. Uh, we have here the loading area and uh, this usually would be wide because most of the activities are done in this area. We have a staging area, the glass freezing area. Okay and an area for forklift charging. On the second floor here, we have the machine room to house the different uh, compressors, a genset, and the motor control centers. And uh, I developed uh, this uh, room sizing uh, selection, uh, which uh, I need to input here the sizes of the uh, cartons, a okay, size of the pallets, how many pallets long inside the room, how many pallets wide, how many pallets high to come up with the size of the room, the length and width of the side. So that's uh, how I came up uh, with this. And then this is how the storage looks like. You can see here the different uh, evaporators installed. Okay. This is uh, your loading area and the offices here. So this is uh, the roof and uh, this is just a concept you know, of how the uh, roofing uh, will be done. So this is in preparation you know, if ever they will uh, put some solar panels on top of this room. So this second floor is the machine room. And uh, on top of the machine room, the roof deck is where you have your uh, condensers, your receivers, and your water tanks. Okay. Again, we just have to the calculation for the uh, room load requirements. And the summary of uh, the different uh, applications like uh, glass freezers, holding freezers, chillers, staging area, preparation area, moving that after room. And uh, after calculating all those loads, uh, these are the information that uh, we provide the supplier, like for example, the evaporators, what type of evaporator do we need and the sizes of the and uh, this will be the selection for the compressors uh, that we, we will be needing 
depending on the temperature requirements. You can see here there is uh, a requirement for only minus 34, a requirement for only for minus 18, and the rest will be for higher temperatures. So to select uh, the compressors that can accommodate all those three uh, temperature requirements. So this is uh, the output of uh, the load uh, calculation program, estimate sheet. And uh, this is uh, how we size the evaporator coils, okay. uh, the recirculators, we need to input all the uh, capacity, the uh, evaporating temperature, the speed, the circulation rate, in order to get also the size of uh, this vessel to be used, the size of the pump, and the size of the pipes. And also a selection of the condensers that we will be using. And uh, this is how uh, the uh, schematic diagram of uh, the refrigerant uh, will look like. Okay. So there will be two condensers, one receiver, and there will be six compressors. Okay, these uh, two compressors here will be used for the glass freezing. So the glass freezers will have its uh, recirculator and an economizer. Uh, the cold storage, in which uh, we have uh, 27 evaporators, will be served by one liquid recirculator. And uh, we have one compressor here uh, to be used to for, for these uh, evaporator units. This is a swing compressor in which, for example, uh, this has a problem, you can use this one for this system, or if any of these two has a problem, you can even use this one to replace one of these uh, compressors. For the high temperature requirements, we have this intercooler, the high stage compressor. So as you can notice, uh, all these compressors are of the same model. So there are many configurations no, that uh, can be uh, used no, to come up to the system, but you need to check everything which would be uh, more beneficial for the customer. So in this case, the priority thing was to uh, have uh, one model only so that uh, the inventory of the spare parts will be a lot less. So another one is a slaughterhouse refrigeration system design. So again, we need to get the information from the customer about their process. Okay. So from slaughtering down to chilling, and then also for the storage production area in the last piece. So from here, we can uh, at least uh, check uh, what is the production line so we can recommend additional processes or equipment to be used so that uh, there will be a good flow of products uh, in this uh, process. Okay. So it's also one of uh, the things uh, that uh, we are doing uh, aside from designing. Uh, all right. So to sum up, uh, this is uh, my experience no, in my 38 years. Okay. So I see that refrigeration is a very interesting industry to be in. So unlike air conditioning where you have uh, selling equipment are all the same, in refrigeration uh, you really need to uh, find out which is the best option or system for equipment to be used. Okay? So it's a challenging one. So it's not a dull job because every time we need to think, we need to do some research. And in doing so, I learned new techniques and practices. So I continue to improve my knowledge and skills in not only designing, 
at uh, also in the operation of uh, this kind of system. And it gives me a sense of achievement. And since there is a shortage of skilled engineers and technicians, most employers will invest in youth training and So what are the skills and knowledge you will need in pursuing a career in your education? So a mechanical engineer should have a good knowledge of physics, dynamics, psychometrics, electrical and electronics. So some of this you can learn from the job, okay? uh, mathematical and computer skills, including the ability to use CAD uh, software, communication skills, including presenting and report writing, knowledge of mechanical or production processes, and knowledge of relevant codes, safety regulations, and quality standards. So how do you start a career in refrigeration? There are two ways, can be to on the job training and work experience placement from local schools. So, the on the job training can provide you an opportunity to be involved in a training agreement with an employer and a chance of being permanently employed in a company. It also gives the training the knowledge and skills he needs to work effectively and professionally. So there are a uh, lot of uh, trainings available online. So Danfoss, no? uh, in uh, the website, has 25 feet in this course. Feedback refrigeration also has a training program online. Uh, STAR uh, learning solutions, both free and paid trainings. Everson, a large um, refrigeration company also. Uh, they have their own training program online. And uh, we in uh, Ashray also have our uh, webinars that we conduct. And so these are some of the uh, webinars that uh, we conduct so about fundamentals, refrigerants, oil and lubricants, vapor compression cycle. Refrigerated facility design type, industrial refrigeration, safe operation, efficient operation, and maintenance of refrigeration systems, load calculations, distributed control in refrigerated hands. So there are also advanced trainings in overseas, like here, uh, for the linear technical college, they offer this course. There's also this uh, RETA okay. and uh, this uh, University of Wisconsin. So we have uh, an immigration training process. And uh, there's a lot more schools or organizations that offer. All right, so that ends uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you. For your attention, and uh, now open up to questions. Okay, at this point in time, uh, before we proceed with our Q&A, uh, we'd like to thank our speaker for this afternoon. For his valuable sharing no? and a very relentless experience. No? As you can see, he has a very sound and, uh, shall we say, fulfilling no? experience of 38 years in the service of refrigeration. No? So always remember the name Arnold C. C. Kabuay. No? Schwarzenegger. So, yes. I have able to meet him uh, basically when I was uh, working with uh, Megawide in the Quezon City. No? I worked in some projects or they were actually he was making some proposals with us, with me, 
in that uh, proposal, sort of proposal was uh, enable us to to travel in Taiwan. That was in G N Q, sir, no? If I'm no, not, no, no. If that I'm not was, forgetting. Uh, with uh, LBI. LBI pala yun. O LBI, akala ko yeah, yeah. LBI. LBI pala yun. So that was the start where a lot of modifications no, and uh, customization mm -hmm. of products being uh, presented. You, you didn't have to buy from pre-manufacturers, no? but uh, you can assemble it through their ingenuity and uh, expertise no, through the LBI. So we were, we were traveling as far as Taiwan to learn a lot, no? We learned about right, magnetic, right. magnetic, uh, what was that, sir? Compressors. Yeah, yung mga, ano, uh, screw compressors. Yes, magnet, oh, magnet yeah. uh, compressors. No? Oilless, oilless, oilless compressors. Oh, yeah, we learned a lot, no? And there was uh, one research center, no? Really focused uh, on E3. The, yes. Uh, that's E3. Yes, but only found in uh, Taiwan, no? so, and we are also able to see the the 100 uh, floor tower, which uh, utilizing the ano yung sa ano yung system na yun yung so, ice uh, thermal uh, storage. Yeah, we were, we were there at the fifth basement, the oldest uh, ice thermal storage. Not 20 years ago, na? no? Yeah, Still operation. <laughs> I only have refreshed back on that memory, no? So, with that said, no? Uh, do you have uh, any question, class? Before we finally conclude? I think Sir Ayan is still here, no? Sir Ayan, our chairman uh, in the Mechanical Engineering Department for Cebu Technical University. So, what else? The recording has stopped. Wala na kayong, wala ba kayong question? Mahiyain pala ito sila? So, huwag kayong mahiya, tanong kayo. While we have uh, still uh, here... Engineer Arnold, no? Engineer Arnold spent for the last years uh, enriching his uh, prowess in the field of refrigeration. You know, refrigeration I mentioned earlier is part of our major uh, subject as well as also major in our power plant. No? Power plant cannot also stay without refrigeration in a way. No? Somehow it can also be part of that. So, do you have any questions? Who, who, are, who are interested no, to venture with the refrigeration in the future might uh, get in touch. And you have also the references provided to you at the end of your webinar. You can continue your trainings online. If not, allowed uh, to uh, some some job, no? Uh, recommended jobs by uh, Engineer Arnold. So, because of this vast uh, experience in this uh, area of uh, profession, I think he knows uh, we, uh, the, all the different places, no? Where to go to practice this. As you can imagine, no? The many pertinent plants that utilizes refrigeration, no? You have in Dabao, you have, I cannot only, only imagine that you have, you have been visiting uh, Cebu for quite some time. Until now, you are still in Cebu, no? For this uh, yeah, Lashon, Lashon plant. Because yeah, of this expansion doing, now. Commissioning. Commissioning, uh, commissioning, no? Okay. So probably if there's a way that uh, CTU can and also undergo an job training from your end. Do you do you allow uh, that? It would be. Uh, I, I think they should talk to the owner of those facilities. Okay. Uh, usually, uh, they have uh, uh, these kinds of programs because it will also help them. It's difficult to get people nowadays 
uh, we have customers that uh, those manning their facilities are not even uh, a graduate of uh, the refrigeration technology or technician. Some are uh, like uh, other trades. So they just learn refrigeration on the job. Yes, but uh, your your case now is under construction, so somewhat risky to our students. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but still, uh, during uh, operations, but during operations, no man, you cannot just easily understood that unless if you stay there for quite some time, no, uh, observing the yeah. what's happening and uh, the operations. So, so normally, normally we do uh, the basic trainings first, so that. Uh, the Chinese will understand better the advanced studies. Right, yes, this, this is the counterpart of air conditioning. As you can see, air conditioning, we develop a lot of training uh, syllabus, syllabus for that, for you to examine and understand well the concept no, of air conditioning as well as refrigeration. Somewhat related, but for me, yeah. th this is an. Uh, a higher end no, in, in terms of uh, uh, before compression cycle is applied, no, the refrigeration. Mm -hmm. As you can see, you see a lot of different uh, equipment no, added there. You have uh, yes, element, what's that? In between, the, the, yes, you have added that. Uh, uh, yes, you have the high stage, you have the booster. So it's different from air conditioning actually. No? So, just a variety there. Diversity is also added. So if you are really intending to to practice this one, you know, as one of your field, you know, so ho hopefully you can remember, no, uh, the, the people who are uh, practicing this, so you can also be guided. So for you have uh, the contact and email of Engineer Arnold, or for example, you have a uh, sort of research that you are doing now that is related to this topic. Maybe you can uh, contact or email, no? communicate with Engineer Ar Arnold for the improvement of your research. No? Probably I, I know that mechanical engineering will deal a lot of each back also on refrigeration. No? So Engineer Ayan, do you have uh, any concern? Or is uh, some three ah, no, no, sir. Okay, or engineer no, Arnold? No, no. Okay. So, in in Ashray, we have also student chapters. Yes. So okay. I'm not sure here in Cebu uh, if they were able to contact you know, the different schools to establish uh, these uh, student chapters. So in Manila, we have PIP, we have FEU, Mapua. Uh, there are also some schools in uh, Bulacan, and even as far as uh, uh, Baguio, and uh, also in Mindanao. So here, uh, I understand that uh, Ashray also partners with PS Barry. So not sure if uh, PS Barry is uh, also here in Cebu. Yes, the uh, Merondin, Merondin with the Peace Valley Cebu chapter, mm. and they have also outreach program that I don't know if they are now concentrating on universities, especially mm. government uh, state universities. But I see a lot of projects, no? It's very, yeah, uh, it's very challenging to see this uh, young student you know, who made already several projects, no? In line with this. Uh, in this uh, area of practice, no? No, it's really uh, no, surprising that they come up no? in this, uh, this field. Now with this uh, kind of webinar, hope that uh, you can gain a lot of uh, no, uh, not only the, the intention to pursue this, but also equipped with all the knowledge no? and this I think the background that start no until the the last end of his air <laughs> not not that where he also shared to us what, what are the requirements no 
and it's got so quite the you can develop that. When I was about to graduate college, uh, actually before uh, I wanted to take up electronics and communications engineering. That's why I enrolled in uh, UST. My second choice was electrical engineering, but never in my mind that occurred to me that uh, I would take up mechanical engineering. And when I was already taking up mechanical engineering, it also came to my mind that I will be involved in refrigeration. So it just happened uh, that uh, I just uh, was in, in, in that company and uh, they have this refrigeration plant. So I, I, I never left you know, that, that career, but I tried to pursue more uh, in understanding. Uh, actually, in, in, when I was in career, I have, um, I have uh, my own department in which uh, I took in a number of uh, young engineers. And uh, now, uh, nine years after, uh, I'm proud to say you know, that uh, these uh, engineers are now uh, working you know, abroad and have uh, good positions in different uh, companies. So here, uh, the interest actually will, will depend on each one of you, which one you would like to pursue, uh, what motivates you, uh, will it be in selling, in design, or project management. So that's something that uh, you need to uh, see, uh, which uh, would be more appropriate for, for So for me, I, I just wanted to understand more. So starting from the bottom, uh, being an operator, I try to understand uh, the other areas in this field. Uh, until today, I'm still learning. Uh, things to learn and to understand, especially nowadays that uh, the technology rapidly developing, so we need to study. So it's not that you already graduate from college, you stop studying, but uh, the more you need to study, to be updated uh, from uh, all these uh, new technologies that are coming. All right, uh, I have a question, which uh, of course I'll be waiting for uh, my class to Raise another question. But this is concerning the prevailing uh, development now. There is a, a Filipino woman. He's now considered to be a scientist now. She developed this air conditioning system, but she don't, yeah. doesn't want to tell the the magic the details. or the, the details. What is your <laughs> what is your uh, Final analysis on this, how did she come up to come up with a refrigerant that enables to call uh, that kind of air conditioning unit? I haven't uh, really read much about it, but uh, it doesn't involve, what I understand, it doesn't involve any refrigerant. Wala, kahit tubig or ano, hangin? Maybe, maybe air, no? but... Uh, hmm. But that, there's something inside that there should maybe a uh, liquidator or uh, probably uh, maybe I look into that. No, they of course that also is the uh, prerogative, no? Not mm. to not to um, divulge that information because that that that, that the essence of the research, no? On her part. I think you are the right person to, to tell us what <laughs> because of your experience. 
<laughs> you, you know how to play on, with the vigilante. <laughs> more on industrial. Mm, I just feel like I'm okay. Because that right now, no, the industry really loves people. People. And uh, there are a number of facilities uh, that have uh, some safety issues because uh, the people manning those facilities uh, don't understand how to operate the system. That's why what uh, we're doing also is uh, to offer them training, especially on safety, what to take the correct operation. Yes, all right, class. Uh, since you are, some of you are graduating and uh, the commencement will start right after you leave your school, then perhaps there's no guarantee that you will land to a job right away. And and uh, to tell you this, what will be what uh, would be your critical path is that the the first company that you will land first. No, I think uh, what happened to engineering Cabo is. He landed first on that kind of job in the region. That's mm -hmm. why he cannot, he cannot take out, he cannot pull back anymore. He started that one and he enjoyed it so much and then continue it for the entire remaining of his, uh, uh, right, right. Of his. so that's what happened, no? Uh, so, and I started asking a lot of questions, mm. even finding out who, uh, who is the contractor who constructed that, that facility. <laughs> and knowing their office, we went to their office yeah. and then uh, asked questions yes, yes, from the good. engineers. So it's, it's, at that time, there's no uh, internet yet, so mm -hmm. I rely mostly on the contractors and also on the available books in the libraries. Yeah, you have that uh, guts, that you have that. Uh, investigative no, nature. <laughs> I, I want to understand how it works. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That facet means me. Yes. It's not only for ending the entire day and uh, expecting mm -hmm. another day to come, but you have, you right. have, you have uh, work there to, to apply your knowledge right away. No? Mm -hmm. And it's not, uh, peculiar, it's not uh, typical to any student. No? I can compare myself no? and uh, I hope that uh, more of you here will also have that kind of characteristic or, or, or uh, you know, I, uh, upbringing or uh, aptitude. No? So, of course, Actually, uh, when, yes. when, when I was in college, I was just an ordinary student. I failed a number of subjects. Uh -huh. I, I also go around like uh, the <laughs> yeah, But when, when I already have a job, that's uh, the turning point. That's I hope the I hope that this group is not uh, the other way around because this this group are scholar ng bayan. Mm. Scholar ito, mga state university scholar ito. No? Mm. So, nice. so it's a promising you know, future for all of these guys. So. That's why we are so glad that uh, you have equipped them with all this uh, knowledge in advance to whatever they're going to pursue in the future. No? As I've said, it's back a refrigeration is a big field that wherever you go, nandun talaga yung it's back. No? Sometimes you can be a contractor for it's back and refrigeration. No? Yeah. With all the knowledge, magkakaroon ka ng knowledge, especially when you have the actual training. Whether you like it or not, pwede ka nang mag-service Ano dyan, mag, uh, mm -hmm. service ka, maintenance. That's, that's the, it depends now on your specialty and where you focus now. Unlike you're just sitting on a, on a on an office work and then, of course, you learn office like design, autocad and everything. But iba talaga yung nasa actual ka. No? You manage and supervise people and you own your own business. Iba talaga. So you're bringing yourself to a higher degree. Just like uh, General Kaboa is telling us now, it's not only dealing with the technicality, but nandun siya sa sale, nandun siya sa design, so he's moving forward, no, he's not limiting his uh, 
part. So we enjoyed it a lot now because uh, at all sense na natryan niya lahat ng area ng refrigeration na yan. No? So I think that the best uh, thing that we can fulfill in our field no, as a mechanical engineer. No? Kaya wala naman tayong ibang putahan kasi mechanical man. So we need only to exercise what is given to us. No? What is the uh, what is our selected ano, engineering? Will not, leave, will not leave it us also in that field. Oh, hindi, hindi na, hindi pa, hindi pa malilimit, no? But, kung oh, isa-isa lang na, you cannot uh, serve two masters at the same time. Yun din ang concept. Yeah. Pero kung kaya mo, why not, no? You can do electrical, you can do civil work. Yeah. As a contractor, you can be a general contractor, but... But I suggest that you deal first with mechanical and after you get bored of that because you already mastered that. Or I think you, there's no mastery, no? Even now and then that, that field technical, technologically is always keep on advancing. No? There's no way you can master that. Unlike same, same to Nina Kabuay, no? He was saying that daily is always an opportunity to keep growing, no? Because I believe refrigeration from 10 years ago and uh, in the coming future will still always be advancing. No? And do you, can you uh, can you share to us what uh, is coming uh, in the near future, like five years from now and 10 years from now in refrigeration? Sir? Right now, uh, the direction is going towards uh, uh, automated storage and more on PLC control. <laughs> So even uh, the operation of your plant, uh, you can now see it in your cell phone. So what's happening inside the temperatures you can monitor. And sometimes you can even do uh, some troubleshooting. So we're not limited only to the physical, uh, uh, what you call uh, physical contact with the equipment, uh, but remotely. Uh, you can do something like uh, checking in with the programs that are included in that system or changing the operating sequence of uh, such system. So that, that's uh, the direction. Also, uh, since uh, we're now concerned on uh, global reducing no? the, the effects of the global warming and also depletion. So the refrigerants that uh, we are seeing now are more of natural refrigerants. <laughs> so for natural refrigerants, uh, there is no uh, actually it's being used already you know, for for like refrigerators or some air conditioners. Uh, uh, this uh, isobutane and butane propane, so uh, ammonia, CO2, which uh, doesn't harm the uh, ozone and uh, doesn't uh, uh, increase no, the global warming potential. And aside from Freon, which uh, uh, we are already used to, uh, there, the, there are now developments on uh, what we call HFOs. So hydrochloroquine. So these are the newer refrigerants uh, that uh, will replace uh, refrigerants like R22, 507, or 8. But these are still uh, very much expensive. And, uh, we're not really sure about uh, their efficiency if you use that in the system. But again, ammonia, uh, CO2, uh, probably uh, would be the ones that, uh, that uh, will be uh, the trend in refrigeration and even in air conditioning. Okay, guys. Wala ba kayong mga ano dyan? Mga concern? No, wala nang mahiya. Wala kayong mahiya. So this uh, kind of technology as you presented are, I believe you are using the Korean technology, no? 
there are other technologies. Korean technology is the same technology as what uh, was invented a long time ago. Uh, when you say technology from other countries, basically it's more of uh, the equipment. Like for example, uh, Korean made uh, compressors, something like that. Or Korean made uh, like uh, pipes or Korean made uh, uh, condensers or whatever. But the principle of operation is the same. There is this technology uh, from Taiwan, uh, what they call star wheel technology. Uh, but this star wheel technology is uh, like uh, a pipe with just pins, only that. But uh, I do not see this uh, technology moving forward especially for because you need to move air uh, that technology doesn't move air it's just a static coil it fits so for for big uh, storages uh, the technology now is blowing the air downwards that will reduce the horsepower requirement of the fans and then uh, also they're doing now designs for low charge ammonia systems instead of the traditional liquid overfeed they now have these low charge systems in which uh, they can reduce the ammonia charge by more than half of what is necessary. Maybe our class is just uh, caught off guard, no? it's just really new to their uh, senses probably, no? Mm -hmm. I myself, no, if you're still not graduated, you're not exposed to the this different type of mechanical engineering, so it would be a great advantage to you to hear this uh, now, especially that uh, these are good foundations of mechanical engineering, no? refrigeration. But of course, you can now equate with your lecture in Chulis, no? You can see now where are those things applied in Chulis. Uh, you know? You're always talking about what is compressor, and then we have the... We don't know how it looks like. PB diagram. <laughs> we have the... Nothing is in paper. Yes, right now in no the actual job, yes. That's why it's good to cope all these uh, studies no, and theories with the uh, on the job training that in order for us to really be prepared when we go to the actual employment, we know already what uh, is expected of us, no, the output that we need to generate for our employer and all that. Of course, it will take time for you to learn all these things and in order to master it. And after you master it for quite some time, then you can earn more, you know, packages, no? Becoming a consultant will give you more packages and earn more also. I think that's the guarantee of your profession, no? But we don't guarantee that after three years, you can probably become a millionaire. Because there are the people, people who just learn to teach things, no? It's a noble profession. It does not await for most promising, no? But uh, if you are in the other area, of course, you can have that. And then you can increase that by, again, the taking... Uh, Actually, yes. when you talk about success, it's, a, it's not about how much money you earn. Yes. It's about how much people you help. Good. So right, re right? Remember that class, huh? Because uh, if you seek money, it's, it's difficult. But uh, if you help people, so in turn, these people can also help you or they can recommend you to some other people, right? Yes which you can have your future business. Yeah, I think that's the essence why we are living and we profess our 
profession no? to practice and by sharing it to uh, other people. Mo si kandari na lang yung iba, no? That's why we want to be part of society, organization. It's as much as we want to learn also, we want to share it to others, no? That's why we're also doing this webinar, no? no? It's a good thing That's that important. Engineer Arnold has that kind of attitude, no? Of, of sharing, no? Especially now when we are just doing online, it's really very hard, no? Sometimes we lose our connectivity and I was not thinking nga kanina, baka hindi na ito makapasok kasi sabi niya, eh, nahirapan daw siyang mag-come in kasi nawala-wala yung ano. The good thing na maganda ang background ng building niya, Asri, nasa Asri siya ngayon. No? <laughs> you know, you know guys, you know guys, you are very fortunate because at your, at your level now, you are already confronted with Asri uh, speaker. An Asri speaker is not just an ordinary speaker, he is already a a top-notch speaker because you cannot be ordinarily assigned as a as speaker if you are not so competent with your area. No? This as speaker is is uh, ra ra very rare no, to find because you cannot see uh, a lot of people who knows how to speak no? primarily on, on, on the scale of refrigeration and air conditioning. Bihira lang. No? We can name a few. No? This guy it's already uh, a by name in the profession or in the trade or in the industry with regards to speaking of ano matagal na to sa ano pa to pinaka matagal na to sa industry na <laughs> si engineer Arnold so pag refrigeration naman si engineer Arnold meron, meron pa ba iba si ano si si Prion lang to eh yung isa sa RC si Prion lang siya eh hindi naman siya mag refrigeration sa no? ha Cesar Lim, kilala mo. Si? Cesar Lim. Oh, Cesar Lim. Ano siya? Sa mga play yun, siya makikita. Hindi ko siya makikita. Ha? Pwede din siya sa refrigeration, sa ASRI, no? Oh, sa ASRI din siya. Hmm, siya ang isa sa mga director doon, no? Chairman doon. Oh, mas matanda oh. sa akin. Oh. <laughs> well, I was not able to contact him also, but since we have already uh, been contacted, uh, from the year, ano pa tayo nakita? 2014 ba yun? 15. So, and oh, in fact, G. Uh, Ferrer is also one of your relative pala. Guys. Mentioned to me. So, Ayan, yeah, si G. Uh, Ferrer. Si G. Ferrer. Magka, magkamukha nga yun. No? Magka relative yung... Ano, yung, yung uh, magkapatid yung lola namin. Ah, uh, kaya may ugnayan yung mukha nyo. Parang gano'n. Okay, Sir Ayan. Ha? Thank you, Sir Ayan. Ha? Sir Ayan, Kalagkad, thank you, Chair, for granting us this... Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yes, authority. Makapag-share. Makapag-share sa CPU, yeah, I, no? I hope that uh, may maging interested sa refrigeration. And malaking opportunity. Imagine, as, uh, I have a technician uh, working in Australia and this technician uh, kung i-co-compare natin yung sahod niya no, kung Philippine peso kung masahod siya ng more than 300,000 pesos yes, that's right no? guys, take note of Aman. that guys ha? technician lang yun take note technician. of that guys take note of that that's really true no? so yung mga ganyan na mga uh, traits technicians, eh, lalo na yung engineer. So, mm -hmm. mas malalaki sa akin. Yes, but uh, share to us, how can we, how can we develop this kind of, ano, expertise, eh, if yeah. you are... Eh, kailangan talaga is experience. Experience, okay. Experience. Uh, when, when I was in my first job, hindi ko na muna tinignan yung sahod. Yes. Kailangan <coughs> makakuha muna akong experience. So, getting as much experience that I can, anong kinugupan ko sa San Miguel doon, natanggap ako. Pero yung first na apply ko sa San Miguel, hindi ako tinanggap. That's so, also a good factor, no? That experience. Ka class, that's also a good factor if you learn like big uh, corporation like San Miguel, yeah. like 
FPI. Earphones, mga Jollibee. Yes. Uh, dito, yung mga full storages, meron yung yes, the Big Blue, may Max Logistics, merong Impact, may Fast Logistics. Yeah. Yeah, dito lahat yan sa Cebu. Eh. Yeah, all you have to Marami, do class is... Virginia. Oh, magpadala na kayo ng mga communication, your intent to apply, kahit wala pa kayo nag-ano. Nag but, uh, is that permitted also engineer that they apply call center? Most of the engineers now applying call center. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Parang malayo. Malayo. Sabi nila, sa the meantime na muna sir, kasi wala, wala mo tayo kita. Call center lang daw muna nila. Ano ba yan? Ano yung mga OJT, yun yung mga cadet engineers, I think some of these companies no, uh, will accept Yes. Mga ganang training. So, pwede mag-coordinate dyan yung mga schools. So, the schools can contact these companies to refer yung mga students who can do OJTs. Yeah, and guys, if you if you need them. one also, guys, OJT, let me try. Tell me if you need that one. Maybe I can uh, recommend you to anybody like San Miguel or whatever. Uh, people that we know here in Cebu, no? And there are also some contractors like uh, yung papuntang konsolasyon, nandiyan yung si GEF. So, malaking company na rin yan. Oh, malapit sa ano? Installation. First, uh, first breed, si GEF. Hmm, yes, oo. Oh. Isa ba yung contractor mo yan? Sa GEF? Si, yeah, ano? si GEF, uh, kaibigan ko yun. Oh, Peace Valley. Oh, Mira kami nakikita ngayon. Founder ng Peace Valley, Cebu. Oh. Yan, yung mga gold deluxe. Meron dyan factory sa Lapu-Lapu. Yes, you can start uh, in engineer level and then if you stay more, you can end up plant manager. No? They have, have so-called plant manager na. Yung mga gold deluxe na yan. So, do you think na gold deluxe lang yan na maliit na store? Hindi. Yeah, they have a uh, a main plant that caters to all the branches, no? Uh, Gold Deluxe is now part owned by SM. SM na pala yan? Ah, okay. Uh, uh, SM na yan. And pala... SM is also venturing into cold storage. Oo oh, nga, yung, yung narinig ko kaya yung shrimp mo, sa San Miguel pala yun, no? Mm. Mga shrimp pala yan, mga banana. So, marami. Uh, I'm, I'm talking also to another company in Manila. Uh, they are a, 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 uh, an insurance company. So, they own a small a small uh, cold storage facility built in the 1950s. Mas matanda pa sa akin. So, they want to upgrade that facility because uh, they see that uh, this business is uh, kumikita giving them revenue but they want to get more revenue yeah we cannot proliferate our economy without sales so i also suggest class that if you happen to venture into ceiling also increase your knowledge in english speaking no that's why i encourage you to report so that you develop your english uh uh no command no this is very quite important no of course we didn't want to be manual lang without talking of course part of that it's also will uh, having that good communicator no? uh, in your part as a mechanical engineer. If you want to pass something, no? if you want to be interviewed, so even if you lack with the skill, magaling ka magsalita, you can bula bula tick your uh, employer, you can pass and get the job. So, you know, also master your, anyway, it's free naman. You need to undergo training. All you have to do is exercise your your knowledge on that, no? Of course, may handicap tayo dyan. More of mathematics tayo. Wala tayong English. Magkano lang ang English ng pre-unit. Of course, you can start with now, no? Talking more about, that's why I ask, engage you to reporting because I want to hear how you present yourself. Because the, the, the manner you present your your report is also the manner how you present yourself, right? How you will sell yourself to other people, to your future employer and all other people, no? So, yeah, when I was also in college, uh, uh, I also cannot speak. Really? 
<laughs> look, look at him right now. Oh. He can even talk more about two or more, two hours or more, no? Because of that. Yeah. Now, how how do you happen to change that kind of ano self condition? We are not able to speak, and right now you are speaking a lot. No, when I was forced to say, <laughs> oh, yeah. of course. So, so I need to. I need to. No, no, no. I, I, I don't really believe that. As a sales engineer, you have really the, 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 the talent, sir. But it's just hidden. I don't, I don't believe that. You don't know how to speak. You have, you have that talent already within yourself. But you are just shy to come out of that, of that what they call the closet, no? Yeah, and, I, I think it's more of a building up your confidence. Building lang, oh, confidence. Lang nandyan na yan. Hindi mo pa. Unlike yung di talaga malunong magano shy talaga na. Meron talaga ganyan. No matter how you want to, ano, hindi talaga niya. Kahit, I don't really, I really. Kahit sabihin mo pa. Especially, mm. if you go abroad, no, you will really need to speak in English or any other language. Yes, that's very important, guys. It's really, when you go abroad, you face up your employer or the HRD. You need to express yourself. Huwag kayong mahiya. And then, when you want to speak to somebody, focus, no? Look at he directly on his eyes and be confident on yourself, no? Because you are mechanical be engineers, no? You focus. Well, not that focus as uh, to over humble that parang nag ano ka na, nag naligaw ka na. No, no, you have some limitation also. No? So, kasi malalaman ng other person, your employer, kung ano ba yung pinagsasabi mo. No? Well, yeah, to also yeah. the limit. So that's it. So what else can we can we share to these uh, young guns? No, these are future young guns. But ultimately, five years from now, di natin malaman na sa position na to power plant, naganyan, yeah. di ba? So right. it's good thing that you you're able to impact them in one area that they cannot miss around. No, uh, that. They can be part and, of the, uh, uh, no? Also, at this time, uh, our, our nation needs for nation to be. Uh, compared to other countries <laughs> in uh, Korea, uh, like Korea, Korea before, no? Uh, we're richer than Korea. Yes, sir, but, but I now, think we are very... Uh, na iwanan tayo ng ibang Asian countries natin talaga sa so I they, they are nationalistic so it's like a, okay sama-sama tayo dito na magtulungan to improve our economy wala eh kanya-kanya tayo di ba para ma yeah. <laughs> kaya wala nangyari sa <laughs> can you imagine Malaysia now is talking about a lot of things that uh, I, I have not seen in here in the Philippines. No? Mm -hmm. I, I have been to uh, joining a lot of uh, the seminars like the district calling plant. They are talking now of district calling plant. Of course, mm -hmm. we have in Negro, but I don't know if it's working already. One uh, mega world project that utilizes uh, district calling plant. I, I only apply that. Yeah, district Kata. calling. Yeah, district calling. So, we have already in uh, uh, Ayala in Alabang. Alabang? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So this pooling is being done by this company called NG, E N G I E. So this is a French company uh, that invests in uh, such facilities. So they build, they operate. Can you operate. consider uh, district cooling as a refrigeration plant already? Not yet, no? Hindi naman zero yan, no? Yeah, not yet, but uh, it's like a hybrid na eh. Hybrid, because, no? Because um, we, we also use, uh, for example, in refrigeration plants, we use glycer oh. uh, for, for uh, uh, Making processing ice. areas, no? mm. like 10 degrees, and then we can incorporate also a chilled water chilled system water. For, uh, mm. for air conditioning. Okay. So hybrid, that's it's a combination, not guys, huh? it's a combination, combination. Yes. of refrigeration and air conditioning. When you reach the mark, uh, say zero degrees centigrade, no? 
but that's yeah. a little refrigeration. So and I hope that you we, will we learn also have this uh, ORC. Remember yes, ORC? That's, that's new. No, I, I also received the that organic kind of... organic runtime cycle. Yes, so it's a reverse refrigeration cycle in which uh, you can uh, produce electricity uh, that not from steam but from hot water only. Hot water, no? Yeah, hot water. Good. Because in, in steam turbine, you use you steam. Yes. But uh, using an ORC, even hot water, 90 degrees, you can produce electricity. So instead of having a compressor, you use an expander. So the direction of, of movement of the refrigerant will be on the other way. Like sa ano naman sa Jutterman is a plus gas tank, no? Is that an expander yeah. also? No, no. Uh, in uh, the geothermal plant, uh, you have uh, different uh, vessels in which you separate the liquid from the yeah. gas. So there are a number of separations. In such time, you get the dry gas that will run the turbine. Mm -hmm. So you need the steam, no? Because you, you draw the steam with water mm. uh, from deep down, no? the ground. Yes. So you uh, uh, pump that into a vessel. So the water uh, that will be in that vessel, you pump it back to the ground. Mm -hmm. Then you utilize only the steam. Yes. Right. So in, in uh, areas where the steam is uh, not that abundant <coughs> anymore, you can use an ORC and uh, utilize the hot water to run the generator using this uh, uh, organic runtime site. Yeah, I hope that uh, it, more of you will learn to power plant. No? It's, uh, it's also a good uh, superior form of practice. Uh, I was teaching yeah, also in Batangas, yeah. Batangas University. Most of the students there are always inclined to power plant because they are near the power plant. Of course, mm -hmm. I want you also to be near to the power plant. We have a lot of power plant also nearby, but uh, of course, uh, I don't know if they are going to hire more of your uh, no, uh, level. But uh, if in case no, you learn to just kind of be, be able to pursue that. And I think some of you are from Toledo Power, no? yung mga babae natin dito are already engaged and even scholar, scholar with Toledo Power Plant. No? And uh, they already promised to be uh, part of the company. Toledo Power is a conglomeration no? of uh, just two prominent mga ano natin, investors. No? Sino ba yun sila? So, nag-ano na kasi, nag-birds na sila eh. So, that's, that way you can practice in power plant. So, of course, I'm not, uh, there's a lot of area, no? There are a lot of area. One, one of this is refrigeration, no? If you want this. So, can you, can you, ano, uh, uh, recommend to themselves, uh, if they want to practice, if they want to travel, some openings now in, uh, in your area. If they are willing to travel Luzon, <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> maybe you can, uh, even in Cebu, no, you have no, if they, if they need a there category. a lot of companies mechanical that uh, they can try to apply. Uh, before, during my time in career, no conception career, uh, yeah, we, we hired a lot of uh, young engineers so that we can train not only in design, but yes. also in installation. So those, those companies, Emerson also, uh, they are getting people. Uh, GNQ, I remember, uh, they have a number of uh, and that engineers, once... Uh, ano yung GNQ, sir? Ano yung GNQ? Uh, contractor. Hindi uh, pala yung York? Yun ba yung York na contractor? Uh, dala nila yung, yung, ano, yung York products. York products. Yes. 
So they are the ones who built itong, ano, itong past logistics dyan sa... Ano, oh, sa... Era, sa... Isolasyon. Isolasyon ba yun? Oh, tama. So guys, uh, you can uh, talk questions to our speaker. You can use your mic. Naka-live tayo, oh, no? Tayo lang dalawa nag-uusap nyo. No? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, it's really a pleasant afternoon and opportunity to hear from our very good, no? Prominent speaker from ASRI Philippines, no? ASRI Philippines is uh, granted no, uh, to uh, an authority to to ano uh, exercise its uh, function as uh, the main uh, group no from uh, American society so we have a branch here in the Philippines as the Philippines no? yeah. and also student branches student branches as well yeah I think uh, siguro mga NCR areas are most uh, recognizing this ano, as the Philippines, a student, no? Unlike here in the provinces, I don't know if really uh, yeah. the membership, no? Yeah. I'm not Can sure. Can you hold on for two minutes? Hold on for two Oh, wala ba kayong tanong class? Oh, na kayong mahiya. Miss Katrina. Sino pa ba yung mga class? The Hinses, tanong kayo mga ano, class trip natin. Thank you for joining, no? I hope you learned something tonight. So, Thank you, sir. Oh, you ask question, Miss Tugao, Miss Tugao. Thank you, sir. Oh, sana kayo alis na kayo. Thank you lang yung masasabi niyo. <laughs> Magtanong kayo diyan. So, what we're doing is that we're not just discussing, but we are bringing you to some aspect, no? Webinar. Webinar is very important to your our cases, no? We should be we should be improving professionally no? through webinar. That's why what we have what we call uh, CPD, continuing professional development. Of course, CPD will not only be taken from third party, but you can also learn that from anywhere else. But the good thing about this will be shared to you through the online platform no you can interact with your speaker no? so by doing that so i'm doing that more and more then keep more progressing and you will learn a lot no? more than what we're learning no so that's one way of the the path to learning no? so with that said and then as sister arnold any parting words there before we end uh, conclude our webinar this afternoon? Well, I, I, I just hope that uh, I gave you some encouragement and some direction which uh, you might try to pursue. Uh, but uh, yeah, as mentioned earlier, based on my personal experience, I, I find uh, this uh, career no, uh, very, very promising, challenging, <laughs> satisfying. So it all depends on uh, what what you intend to do uh, in, 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 in your pursuit of a career. Uh, what direction be it uh, in sales, design, operation, maintenance, project, or probably it may not be uh, the course you really want to take uh, other uh, areas of the engineering field uh, like uh, 
um, yeah, electrical, CV, whatever. So it will uh, all depend on uh, what uh, will uh, uh, what you call uh, encourage you later on. So sometimes I remember uh, there are people that after reaching a certain age, uh, they discovered that they have this talent and uh, very far from what they uh, really paid attention to the college or other work experience. So they pursue this. Uh, uh, like uh, for myself right now, no, I'm looking into farming in the near future. Farming, which is uh, a lot different though, from from what I have done in the past few decades. Uh, you can imitate this, guys, if you are now ready to. We're <laughs> gonna retire, no, guys, but. Uh... Wala pa tayo dyan sa case na yan. Parang malakas pa yung momentum nito, mga oh, young guns. Marami, marami pa kayong pwede magawa. Oh, marami pa yan. So, probably in my case now, in this stage, I'll be thinking about what work will I do, no? My, uh, after graduation, what will, what sort of job will I'll be doing? No? But I think that's the thinking of these guys right now, no? Ano kaya ang matab... Ma, ma, of course, there's no, there's no. Yeah, maraming magi influence kasi yan. Yes. It depends rin on uh, your status. Yeah. yeah. What I'm saying, there is no uh, limitation. No? Everything for you is a big uh, room for ano talaga. Anywhere you can practice. No? As long as align with your engineering, mechanical engineering profession. Pero kung uh, each back man yan, okay, master each back, no? Be able to master at like three years. Can you master each back, sir, within one year? <laughs> no? <laughs> so how many, how many years probably for them to master? <laughs> 38 years nga ako si Sir Arnold, di ba? Lami kong tanyo eh, no? So you cannot master it, guys. If you want to uh, develop as becoming uh, a king on this arena, uh, I might call Engineer Arnold now as a king because of, of this qualification as more than 30 years. Parang para sa akin, king na yan. Eh. Nobody can refute that kind of uh, na, ano, eh, uh, pillar. Eh. Parang pillar na yan sa, sa each back. Eh. Kasi pag nandun ka na sa Astrid, guys, you're already a pillar. Uh. Lana. Oh, but it's not me na it doesn't mean na susundin mo lahat ng sinasabi niya kasi so hindi apila. A guide na lang siya, parang guide. Oh. Uh, uh, not everything. Kasi meron mga uh, you can learn something and uh, you can also not try to do uh, what others are doing. Yeah. But it, it will create an impact kasi it will create, especially right now, we are prolonging this topic and it will dwell on them, on their senses ba. Matatandaan nila, it will create an impact on them na ito pala yung level. At in a way, ma-incline din sila dito because they try to to find the passion on this one. Diba? Without knowing it. Without knowing it. Yeah. Without knowing it. Because in, in my in my place, when I was about to graduate, I was landing a webinar on power plant that was uh, ju geothermal. But it's not to happen, I land on that. But it gave me really an impact, no? What mechanical engineering, because that, that, that uh, starting point I learned, ganun to pala mechanical engineering. In the sense that I, I'm trying to say, hindi, hindi, hindi na lang ako tutuloy nito, ang hirap pala nitong geothermal na to. <laughs> ano ano gagawin ko wala naman ako magagawa ay ako rin na mechanical engineer of course not yet license but you are already a mechanical engineer yeah. so ano ba ang gagawin hindi ka na pwede mag backtrack unlike, unlike now pwede ka mag call center you can ano, temporarily but later on babalik ka pa rin sa practice mo kasi sayang yung five years mo something na oh. uh, dapat to 
what you want to do is something na yung gusto mo talagang gawin. Yes, yung always remember that something uh, na ah, basta magkatrabaho lang. That's why I asked him, so, sir, in the beginning of our study, what is your uh, what is your, that decision that made you decide to become a mechanical engineer? Sabi nila, sinabi kasi ng uncle ko, sinabi kasi ng tita ko, sinabi kasi ng papa ko, make sure na ikaw yung mag-decide. Uh, uh, <laughs> diba? Tinanong ko kayo yan, why, why, ano, why have you decided to enroll mechanical engineer? What is your, what is your plan for five years? Sinabi ko sa kanila yan. Ito yung essence ng ano, eh, mechanical engineering. <laughs> uh, earlier in my high school days, I was thinking of uh, entering the prison. Huh? <laughs> prison? Ah, uh, okay. Prison. Marami, marami dito, marami dito, mga pariun. Kasabot, baka bisaya, sir? Uh, Gamay. <laughs> marami din yung mga pariun, nilayat, nilayat sa bakod, nilayat sa yeah. pen. <laughs> Marami magpare. Yeah, isa, oh. isa lang kaklasik ko ang person ng Bristol. Mm. Si, ano, si uh, Villegas. Oh, nagka, nakapare talaga. Oh, si, ano, so Galing na yun. Villegas. Magaling na yun, si Villegas. Nasa dago pa na siya. Oh, nadago pa na asayo, no? Hmm. Oh, yan. Hindi ka mag-ano talaga yan. Maganda yan. Aside from uh, spiritual sharing yan. So, maganda. Magandang earning dyan. <laughs> so, guys. Uh, mechanical engineers to be, no? By mere, by mere one to two months. If you're taking the board exam by August, you can be an engineer the next year. So, hopefully, you can put this by mind and heart and uh, able to cultivate this and develop this kind of special skill actually special skill man ito yung refrigeration no not just the theory and the design we did it but you can you can you can uh, develop more by forcing yourself not forcing but encouraging yourself no to acquire more trainings that would Ano ba? Enhance your learning. And as mentioned, ba? laki ang ano nito. Uh, uh, expected ano nito. So, with that said, no? So, dito tayo lahat. We are about 87. So, thank you. Actually, these are my yeah, four classes, much. no? Four classes and they are all uh, somewhat graduating. Graduating, oh, graduating na sila this uh, semester. And I think by by June or July, Anong ano nyo? Anong graduation rights, no? Kailan yun? August, sir. Ang tagal pa pala, August. <laughs> so, ano pa pala kayo? June, July, August. So, so they're already taking the review. Comprehensive review with me for the four classes. No? I try to incorporate also the webinar. So, it's a good opportunity for them to learn. So, so in behalf of CTU, lumabas na si Engineer Ayan Kalagkad, our our chairman for the mechanical engineering. Would like to thank you. We will just uh, send you. to you your thank you. Uh, certificate, no? Miss Mary Maria Tabak, and you prepare the certificate for our Ashley speaker, no? Uh, to be signed by Sir Ayan and our dean for the College of Engineering. So make sure that uh, com ma complete na tong ano natin uh, discussion for tonight. So thank you, Mr. Speaker, you. and hope you will be blessed more and uh, you can share more to other people. And hopefully this is not the end of our uh, session. Sure, sure. Baka malami pa tayong session uh, to come. I, I, I want to have more engagement than as mga students as much as possible. Yeah, kung yes. meron tayong mga questions. Even yes, sana mag-question kayo. Tatanungin natin to, sana mag-question ito. So, Mary Katrina, question. Maria Katrina. Wala ka rest, sir. Wala, yun? 
Hinches. Hinches. Ito yung mga class trip natin, mga, mga, mga ano natin, bigatin. Hinses, oh wala. Sa? <laughs> oh, hinayin mong kuwan. Hinayin mong reception. Wala. Mantos. Ibanyes. Amorin. Dinoy. Shilami. Kolim. Kinyo. Wala na. Shai sila. Wala kayong project ngayon related to each back or refrigeration? Wala, sir. Wala. Ano yung mga project na undertaking nyo ngayon? PST, sir. Ha? Ah, Imperador. Question, Imperador. Ito si Imperador. Mahilig to sa, ano, sa inuman. It's a class representative at 4 p.m., no? Meron na tatlong... Tatlong schedule for Wednesday at saka one Thursday. Okay, kayo ang tatanungin ni Engineer Arnold ngayon. Hindi kayo magtatanong. <laughs> oh. Na-encourage po ba kayo? Oh, na-encourage yes, ba kayo? Question. Yes, sir. Yes. Maraming salamat. Oh, sino yung nagsabi ng yes, sir? So, yes, sir. Please explain why. Explain. Bakit yun na-encourage? Sino, sino yung nag-major dito ng it's back? Kasi related ito, you cannot explain air conditioning if you don't know refrigeration. As well as if you cannot explain refrigeration if you don't know air conditioning. No? These are always parallel, no? Even though, iba-iba sila ng in a way, mga concept. But then, if you cannot explain the other one, wala rin. Oh, question. Ano pong worst situation? Oh, Engineer uh, Arnold, ano po yung worst situation you experience in working in a field of refrigeration? Baka gusto, uh, experience. gusto yatang sa bugi nito ni ano ah. Uh, worst experience. Oh, when, when the project. No? Alis na. It's not working. <laughs> Meron mang nag-ganon sir? Hindi nag-work? Initially, uh, on paper, okay. And then, uh, when the installation is finished, you try to run it. It's not okay. But uh, you will be able to find a way to make it work. How can you just trample a paper like a trampling an actual project, sir? Can you trample a paper <laughs> and an actual project? I don't like it anymore. <laughs> you cannot get out of it. Once you started it. You what are you going it. to die uh, to do, sir? Are you going to die or just continue with it or hide, uh -huh. hide from it? I will not hide. I will continue to finish it. <laughs> no, I can. I because, can feel uh, uh, the industry will know what you do, what you did. Wow! So you need to uh, really uh, take care of your name in the industry. Yes, that's so, guys. They no? see that uh, your project will fail. No, everybody will know. And the more you'll become famous. <laughs> it's a negative, yeah, you'll become and negative. famous and nobody will talk to you. <laughs> nobody will. <laughs> yeah, but if you do good, uh, everybody will be looking for you. That's right, no? For new, for new projects. So, uh, but don't be wary about that, guys, huh? 
So we don't have to to instill that to you now. Of course, that's a, that's a, something like possible no, to happen, but we are not doing that for the sake of of our practices now. Of, there's a lot of way not to to keep out from any harm or danger now. That's why we have the safety, no? safety that will work not against us but within us now that to, to free us from you know, this kind of worse things that will happen. No? Most may mga ganyan, but that, as I said, ano lang, be humble lang, and then just uh, just stay with the, what is the norm of legal ethics. Yun lang naman para hindi ka against yeah. the flow and, of ano. And another important thing is, hey, if you commit a mistake, hey, you take the responsibility. And do not run away from you. <laughs> yeah, it's very important. And the customer will appreciate you more repeating uh, your mistakes and taking responsibility. Yes. And and bear you also, if there's a a crisis or a problem, there's an opportunity. Opportunity means right. the more the customer will add buying you. Because hmm. without knowing, yun pala yung cost ng additional ano mo, opportunity. Kasi when you bear that mistake, mag a on tuloy yung employer, uh, yung customer right. mo. That's yeah, the, there, the there principle. A, I'll just tell you a short story that yeah, yeah, happened yeah. before. <laughs> uh, when I was uh, with GNT, okay, I got this project for a supermarket chain. It's a South supermarket. And uh, the uh, purchasing manager is also the owner. And she's an old lady, very strict. When she doesn't you or you need something that she doesn't like, uh, she will scold you and shout at you. So she awarded me the project, and then she asked me a favor. Can you reduce your uh, cost for the installation to this much? And I told her, I'll check with my boss. So I called my boss, then my boss said, no. And then she started shouting at me in front of so many people inside the conference room and being overheard by her staff in the office. So I just allowed her to shout. And then I told her, okay, uh, there's only a misunderstanding here. And uh, I, I tried to... Uh, to uh, uh, in Vince, no, uh, but in the end, uh, my boss uh, didn't uh, really uh, gave this no signal for the additional discount. So the uh, owner awarded it to this contractor. The problem is at that time, uh, yeah. our office is in Quezon City. The project is in the so at that time, the Skyway was still being uh, constructed. And uh, when this contractor was uh, doing the installation, he was complaining to the owner. Oh, they don't have somebody to supervise the project. So the lady scolded me again. <laughs> so, so what I did, uh, I asked the owner to uh, supervise. The owner said no. So what I did is uh, um, I uh, talked to one of the supervisors, uh, called the supervisor, okay, uh, can you please uh, go and supervise that project? I will pick you up in the evening in, uh, sa, uh, in Los Baños. Then we'll have dinner, and then uh, I'll bring you home to Kainta before I go back to my home in, in Madina. So almost every night, oh. just to have somebody there to supervise the project. Yes, yes, that's true. So. Then when uh, 
the project was finished and uh, she appreciated the, the work. Seeing me, seeing uh, my super people. And when I transferred to Carrier, no, she had another project. She awarded the project to me. See, so, see that is an opportunity. So don't mind the, the shouting and the scolding. Just do your work properly. Yes, yung iba, alis na, uwi na yan. Oh, uwi na. <laughs> Authorized cost, just cost. Uwi na yan eh. So you should learn how to be diplomatic also with your customer. That's right. So I received a lot of scolding from the customer, but I didn't find it. Uh, it's part of how the customer will treat you. Yes. But later on, when she realized that, or he realized that you're doing your job, we appreciate it. And we'll give you the next project. Mm, that's right, guys. That's so, how it is, huh? It seems. So, in short, wag kayong magbulakbul, ha? <laughs> so, wala na. Wala na kayong question. Umalis na sila. Yung iba. Okay? So, I think uh, we have hours, no? Uh, it's already 4 o'clock. Almost 4 o'clock. So, we're gonna say goodbye na to our speaker. <laughs> Thank you, Engineer Arnold, for parting hey, to us thank you too tonight. For no? me the webinar. Thank you, students. Thank you everyone. You the future. Yes, of course, of course. So, thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good day, sir. Thank you, sir. Good day, sir. Bye-bye. Don't forget to go to the hospital. Just wait for your practice. So, please, don't go to the hospital. Thank you, sir. Good day. Thank you, sir.